the street, but we're going to be obedient to hear and then speak forth what people have to say. And one of the, an example I got, one of the years we, when we had our prayer tent, we had a gal that had been in a church for years, but didn't realize God still speaks today. And so somebody had given her a prophetic word telling her that she was going to change her ministry and go into this instead. And as it's exactly what she had been debating, you know, mm. uh, that she felt like she should do. Well, once she heard that, she was so mm. blown away that she left the event and went home because she couldn't believe that God would speak to her, speak to somebody to speak through her to give her that confirmation. And I just wonder how many people are around mm -hmm. that don't realize that God speaks today. Yeah. So, so explain that a little bit, prophetic evangelism. What do you mean by that? Okay, so prophetic evangelism <laughs> would be, so say, Rebecca, you have a word. God, you, you know, you feel like God gives you a word for somebody. And um, so let's say you don't know, they don't know you and you don't know them. But you tell them things about their life that only God would know. Mm -hmm. And you start telling them that, you know, this is what I believe God's saying. And you start saying these things like this person said, you know, I, I see you in ministry, but I don't see you in the area that she was. He said to her, I see you in children's or young adult or excuse me, youth. Mm -hmm. And her eyes lit up because it's like that's what she felt like she was in the wrong one. Well, if a non-Christian, you could ask if they're in back pain, or maybe you have a name that comes to mind, and it could be their son that is in trouble and you're praying for them. So it's something that God gives you about that person, and you reveal yes. it through the through Holy Spirit. And that is evangelism because it's giving them the awareness, that awakening of a God who loves them intentionally and sees them. That he's real. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we're speaking into someone's life that only the Lord would know, they know. Because there have been times where I've gotten something and I said, you've, been, you've told this to nobody. This is a cry of your heart. There's, you've been crying out to the Lord, asking him these questions. And this is what he's saying to you in response. And, you know, that, that just... What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Opens up the heart of God to people. Mm -hmm. It makes them, they become undone. Mm -hmm. They're shocked that, you know, that God would, would you know, I, I, I think that, you know, that God is real. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that just makes it known. And what's exciting for me especially is that you guys are going to be a part of the prayer tent. So for an exciting part for me is to be able to see that, I know these words are going to be activated and I know that people are going to be touched because I know the heart of each one of you guys. And so I feel like, you know, people are going to be overwhelmed at the different things that they just, I think you got, oh, what's the best way to, to word it when they have their own way of thinking what church might be, mm -hmm. you know, I think is, is God real? Well, he is. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. Yes. For sure. Because it's not about church, it's about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we, you know, the, the, I think the world does have a very bitter taste when it comes to church. Yeah. Because they don't know, they just don't know him. And that for yeah. so long, church has been an established structure, structured, mm -hmm. you know, I go to church or I do this. Or, you know, yeah. it, it's just been, God has been such a religion. And, and in these last many years, more and more and more, God is revealing himself. No, I'm relationship. I'm a person. I want relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's so intentional and real. And that, again, that the church being revival coming to the church in a, in a in a way that we're tangibly experiencing God and tangibly hearing his voice and getting to know him then we become that manifest presence a demonstration of Jesus to the world and that's I believe what what God is moving and doing 
right now. He's, he's, taking, he's taking religion out of the church and bringing forth relationship. Yeah, amen, mm -hmm. amen. And, but that's, we have to be intentional at not only having that with him, but then having that with one another. And I think that's, some, that's been a challenge in the church, is being willing to be intentionally in relationship with each other. So we've gotten, especially with, you know, social media and phones and, you know, and now so many people working at home, they, they, it's relationships are hard that you need to be intentionally pursuing one another in relationships. Just as we do with him, we need to be that with each other. And so as we, that takes work and it takes commitment, but it is what will change society. It is what will change the world, is relationship with him and with intentionally with each other. And I think when what goes with that also is when you talked about when, when Barb, you were talking about revival and how that revival, it, it has to come from within us first. Yeah. Because we're not able to give what we don't have. Oh, yes. And so I think, you know, that that part is is going to be very vital, you know, and I just, I'm, I'm excited because I keep thinking people are just going to be blown away mm -hmm. to realize, wow, there's a really, truly a living God that hears and you're hearing him. Tell me, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm just, I'm just undone by what I think is going to happen. I have, you know, we talk about our declarations mm -hmm. and decrees and Mary talked a lot about prayer, about prayer before, um, you know, events and, you know, just like this church, it's, it's, it's so fertile and it's been bathed in prayer for four and a half years. And we're, we're expecting God to move, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we're expecting eagerly and waiting. And we've mm -hmm. talked about expectation. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we need to be expectant. That's a, a faith. It's faith. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we know that the Lord put this upon your heart, and therefore we know it was God's idea. Mm -hmm. God has such amazing strategies, and when we connect to his heart, it's amazing the things that, that he wants to do in and through us. And how it was in, God created us uniquely different intentionally so that we would bring aspects of his character you know we're all different mm -hmm. and how we're going to respond to what the lord is asking of us is going to look different in all of us yeah. we're not you know sometimes you well i wish i was like her i wish i prayed like her i wish i could do that like no you just as that relationship with the lord you develop who i am and how he wants to move through us and that's what i love too is there's i believe on a daily basis everywhere we go we're going to see you know, people demonstrating the Lord in his different aspects. But at this outreach, you're, I believe, we're, we're wanting to see all come out. Yeah. <laughs> the church and the unsaved. You, we're believing that God is going to move in, in those that have maybe been kind of, I don't know, disenfranchised or hopeless or feeling empty, but they know the Lord, but they're just stuck. You know, and God's going to unstuck them. <laughs> and, and then those that are going to be awakened to, to the Lord for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that that's God's heart is that, that all different levels of, of people are walking with the Lord are going to be there. And God wants to touch all of them, all of us. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. that... Oh, that, yeah, that exactly, that's exactly how I feel. And, you know, um, one thing that I do like about you guys is that, you know, you declare and you decree. And so, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not yet seen. Mm -hmm. So what are we hoping for? You know, you had a great demonstration of, about hope and faith with Robin Bullock. Do you want to? What? <laughs> That's the one where you, you take your hope and you. Yes, hope is the. And we've talked about yeah. that. That hope is the soil with which faith grows in. Yeah. So you, hope is the foundation, that faith grows in, mm -hmm. and comes out of. So we we first foster that hope, in in hope in the Lord, and then our faith grows, in that. But. Yeah. 
that's what you meant. Yeah, I did, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So can you share what the afternoon will look like? It starts from one to five, but can people come and go, or do you want people there at one? And is there an order of events? Or um, well, if you're just if you're basically attending, um, it'll start out with music. Um, I feel like if anybody knows who Sean Foyt is, he's gone all around the nations. He's gone all around the United States. Very mighty man of God, and very you know God put an anointing on him. And so he sings and preaches and, and does all kinds of different things. And I feel like, you know, Rebecca's husband, Dave, Pastor Dave, has mm -hmm. those same qualities, those same giftings. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I have got not only just three mm -hmm. awesome preachers, I have an, an awesome prayer team, but now I've got just a beautiful worship team that's going to be there too. And really, that sets the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord and everything. Mm -hmm. And so it'll, it'll start out with music, mm -hmm. and then we'll go. I'll do a quick testimony, and then um, then we'll have some preaching, and then we'll go s just after that, you know, music and preaching and music and preaching. And then um, if if there's churches that have um, wanted to come on board, so they're going to bring their own table and chairs, and then bring some literature if they want about their church and what they're doing and um it, and it's an opportunity too if somebody's um looking for a church and say i don't know where to go then they could talk about their church so that's one of the one of the things that they're, that they're mm -hmm. going to see and then um we'll have a baptismal tank oh um, that's fun so i'm really hey. excited <laughs> yeah i know that's so exciting. if anybody, you know, in the book of Acts, it talks about when they made that decision, they baptized them right mm -hmm. then and there. They didn't make them wait a month or three months mm -hmm. or a year later. They did it immediately. So we're going to be doing that too. So yeah. that's kind of what the yeah. day will look like. I was going to say, I think it might even be warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no rain in no sight. Rain. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. So they have to bring their own chair then. Yeah, bring your own chair. Bring your own chair. Yeah. So if you're, if you, you know, whether you're a Christian, we need you. If you're an on fire Christian, we need you. Um, if you want to hand out any, any, you know, invitations to the community that's unsaved, you know, we've got these invitations that we're, that we're sending out. Um, so it's just a way. It's kind of like a gospel track. So it just lets them know, you know, kind of like who is Jesus, but you know, so it's it's really it, it involves the church in full, mm -hmm. because you can't have an outreach or a revival without the church being involved, and then you can't have salvations without the unsaved. So it, it it's both. So I think when we go to think about it, I think it's just like how you said we're looking for a revival and we're looking for an awakening. And I think you can be an on fire Christian, and God can just still speak to us even more. Yes. Than what He did before. Yeah. Absolutely. You can always throw more gas on the fire. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You said earlier that you're going to be going out, um, handing out some of these invitations tonight. Tonight, yes. Are is there an invitation for others to join you? Yeah. If anybody wants to come, we're going to meet at Central Park in Superior at six o'clock. Tonight. Tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. to, so if any of you are interested in, in helping out with that and, and just putting um, invites into the doors, yeah. I'm assuming, um, come out tonight at 6 at Central Park in Superior. Um, anything else that you have kind of on your heart that you have just wanted the church to know or, or just have, you know, you've, Another thing I know about you is how, how your heart for unity, you mm. so, I mean, we all do, you know, it's partly why we've been praying every night for four and a half years is that longing and, and desire, God's longing and desire mm -hmm. to see the church united. And it's possible. It's, yeah. We think of unity as we, we have to all do everything exactly the same. But no, it, the unity of heart is the, having his heart first. That we're unified with his heart and then loving one another through his eyes, through his heart. And that's where unity is possible and can come together. That he's obviously 
our all in all, our source, and then we, but, so I know that about you, that you have just, that's why you've done much of these different things, is you're longing to see unity in the church. Well, and I, and I do believe if we have uh, unity within the church, that we're going to see signs and demonstrations that we've, we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us, we're, we're, you know, we're chomping at the yeah. bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to see this. Mm -hmm. Well, it says signs and wonders and miracles will follow those that believe. We believe and we, we have believe. a faith to know this is God's heart. Mm -hmm. God is a God of miracles. It says that Jesus went to the cross and by his stripes we were healed. So healing is something we can expect from him and know from him why it doesn't always happen when we pray in the moment we don't understand but no. we know it's his heart and it's for everybody mm -hmm. it's for everybody to be able to do it it's his promise but god spoke to somebody and you one of you may remember he said this new generation will be the nameless faceless people of god and i really believe that because just yeah. as we were sitting here he told me that he likes to see his people operating like the Lone Ranger in a good way. You know, he doesn't want you to be away from the body of Christ. But any of you, do you remember the Lone Ranger? Mm -hmm. He always wore a mask and nobody really knew who he was, but he did good. And then he went back to his previous disguise. And I think that's what he wants the body of Christ to be, to be at the right place at the right time, to obey him and do what he says, and then be gone. Because God gets the glory. Mm -hmm. God alone gets the glory have to be obedient and it's the little things that God does I think this outreach will be many little things that will make a big thing and many big things too mm -hmm. it's not always the huge things that make a huge change you know I was listening to something the other day and he said he said he's known many pastors have been really discouraged because they so long to see change in their city and but they they would they realize well no change isn't going to come to our city because all the church all the churches aren't on board they're not connected and he said you don't need all the churches mm -hmm. connected it just takes one or two or three that are willing to be united in their heart with the Lord it, it and that's it 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 with a few God does much mm -hmm. because they're surrendered hearts and mm -hmm. and then it it multiplies. And that's what I believe, that as we are obedient to do what God asks of us, you know, God multiplies it. So this outreach is going to plant seeds in people's lives that will we'll see other things happening because of what happened here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what harvest is. You sow the seed and then there's a harvest. You're sowing seeds. We are all sowing seeds, you know, where when we speak, when we love, when we act, when we obey, when we do things that God is calling us to, we're planting seeds and we can believe for and know that God will water it with his spirit and a harvest and will be produced. Yeah. And so we know that what is being sown into this day, this outreach, there will be a harvest in years to come mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. And that's what we believe and trust mm -hmm. because Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> we know our God. That's right. That's right. He does right. get the glory. And, and if, any, if anybody's out there, too, that, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not an evangelist. You know, we all have a gift. And that doesn't mean that you're going to actually witness witness. But God, there's many ways that God can, can use us in different ways to minister to the to the community so i don't want anyone to think like oh i'm not an evangelist therefore i can't i can't go you know is it's we're all to have that gifting in us so you know it could be through prayer it could be through a smile mm -hmm. it could be you know maybe somebody's not doing well and you just want to walk up to them and give them a hug mm -hmm. because you you just sense you know like god will put on your heart that they're aching in some way and you can just go up to them and just say you know I just wanted to give you a hug I felt the Lord say you know to give you a hug there's so many different ways that we can you know evangelize other than I think people have that in their mind street witnessing mm -hmm. and that's not the case 
So I just want everyone to realize that, you know, it's just the small little things that we do. Mm -hmm. It is, very much it is. Because every one of Mm -hmm. those, they're they're aspects of who Jesus was. Kindness, you know, a smile, a hug. You know, just, oh, I really like your dress. That looks really nice on you. Someone sits up a little bit higher, you know, because they were noticed. Mm -hmm. You know, just things like that, that we just forget that matter and make mm-hmm. a difference but again that's that's how our words matter when we speak life words into mm. people and when our actions speak life into people that is demonstrating Jesus and it does draw his presence and then it brings forth hunger I think mm-hmm. I want to know this God you know <laughs> yeah. you know yeah and you know you mentioned unity And I think that's a huge key. And I think, you know, one of the divisions that we always have with churches is everybody's like, well, you know, well, I go to this church and then you go to that church. And and one of the things I always liked about you and Pastor Dave is that's never been an issue. Everything's always been about unity Mm -hmm. and coming together. It doesn't matter who's doing what. It's like, are you needed? We have Mm -hmm. a spot for you. Mm You know, and it's being the like-mindedness. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that's, I think, is what's missing. It's not who's going to go to what church and, you know, some of those things. I think we, I don't know, there just seems to be like a stigma about it, I think, sometimes. I think we just need to have, God, you know, God first and that servanthood second. There you go. Well, and, and recognizing that he's our father and we are his sons and daughters which makes us brothers and sisters that's right <laughs> you know we are a family mm-hmm. and and i've always seen the church and we are a family and yeah we're at different levels of understanding of maturity of connection with the lord you know we are we are all at different levels but but if we can see ourselves as a family that god loves each and every one of us lord help me to see this person the way you see them so that I see past behavior, I see past, you know, outward appearance, and I just see what you see in them. And then I'm able to love them as he loves them. Oh, that's but, you know, we can't do it without him. No, that's right. We, we have to yeah. have that relationship with him so we can know his heart and love as he loves. And that that's an intentional, what we've been talking about, an intentional seeking relationship with him. But that's what we were created for. That's right. We were created for relationship with the Lord. Yeah. We were created to commune with Him and then be Him to one another. Yeah. And if we could see past the denominations and go. past the walls yes. and past the differences and just <laughs> see what He sees and love who He loves, mm-hmm. which is all. <laughs> you know, that's so good. I read yeah. something that just cut me right to the heart. And we want to always, we always say we want to be the people that love Jesus. But Jesus wants us to be the people that love Judas. Yes. Jesus washed Judas' feet. And you know, there's, we may be Judas to somebody that we don't know we are. On the other hand, we see Judas is out there. We need to be Jesus to them. We can't judge people because we don't know where they're at. We, all we need to do is just love them with the love that Jesus has given us. Mm-hmm. And let him, yeah. let him be the one that is seen and, and heard. Yeah. You know, we, we can love with truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, truth becomes evident in our lives as we love the way yeah. he loves. I don't think sometimes, I think sometimes we think we have to give these big speeches, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's just how we love yeah. that is seen and heard and truth is recognized. Like you said, going up to somebody and giving them a hug. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that if when I've been broken and somebody's hugged me, that there's something about it that the Holy Spirit touches me. Mm-hmm. You can just do something like that. Like Rebecca said, speak a kind word to somebody. You don't know where they are at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So needed. It is needed. It's very much needed. But don't you think when you're mentioning that and talking about that unity, then that's when we become one Mm -hmm. with God. 
And then when we do that, then out of our belly will flow those rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we can we can be refreshing to somebody. Yeah. Which is what we want. Yeah. Yes. That's why mm -hmm. revival in the church and trusting the Lord for the awakening. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love how, you know, awakening, you mentioned it at the beginning, that awakening is that suddenly aware of something or someone. You know, you suddenly become aware where you want, weren't. Mm -hmm. That's awakening. So we need both. And that's what happened in the Jesus People Movement that we're ripe for again. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went, Jesus literally went to, do you know, you remember Hate Ashbury, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was that a hippie. San, San, San Francisco. Francisco. I mean, and that was just the place where everybody got all the drugs and, and he went mm -hmm. right there. He went right there. Jesus met mm -hmm. them right there. And that's where it spread from, from what I understand. And he didn't clean, he didn't go to people who were cleaned up. Yeah. He went to the people that were in the pit. And he put his hand down and he lifted them out. That's the God we serve. Yeah. We can't even figure him out. Where is he going to go? When is he going to do his revival and awakening? We don't know, but we know when it comes, it's going to be astounding. Yeah. And we want to be there to help. Yes. We want to be there on Saturday because yeah. we want to see the yeah. presence of God in action. Mm -hmm. and moving through his people. Yeah. yeah. Through his people. Mm -hmm. How exciting will that be? So again, um, we're just going to wrap up our conversation. But again, Saturday, this Saturday, July 16th at 1 o'clock at Central Park in Superior. Um, just come. Just come and be a part of it. And... and be a part of what God is doing, and he, he is moving. He's moving in this region. He's moving in this nation, and he is moving on our lives individually because he's an intentional God, and he's a God of hope and a God of life and truth and power and love. And he would that we would all experience the fullness of who he is and the fullness of what he's created us for. So... We get to be a part of that. And um, we're going to have Kathy um, share what God um, spoke to her again. And, and just, just hear the voice of the Father in this and what he's saying to us, to all of us, to encourage us. And then we're going to close out in prayer. Um, but right before you do that, again, I want to thank you, Rose, for joining us. It was just a delight to have you and a delight to hear what... God is doing and and just thank you for your obedience in it. Thank you for saying yes to the Lord because many lives are going to be saved and touched because of your heart and your obedience. So thank you very much. Well, thanks for letting me come today. You know, it was our pleasure and our joy. And just for those of you that, that may have come on here for the first time, um, I usually do this at the beginning, and I just kind of messed up. So I just want to <laughs> share. Gonna we're going to share, share who we are, just in case <laughs> you're on here for the first time. And I'm Rebecca Ballard. I'm Barb Melroy. I'm Earl Sligman. I'm Mary Gollinger. I'm Kathy Hollander. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have Kathy share this again. And, and again, just if you're watching, just close your eyes and hear the voice of your Father speaking to your heart and to all of us. And then we're going to close out with some prayer. And just before I share it, I've been in just experiencing an excitement um, in my own heart about what God's doing. He's on the move and he's doing something. Mm -hmm. So if anybody <clears throat> who comes to join us wants to catch that fire um, to, to be, mm -hmm. you will we'll come in and we'll pray for you. You know, mm -hmm. the, just to catch that fire that, that, that we're experiencing that, and that we're, we're anticipating things and we're preparing for things to change. Yes. But this is what the Lord said one more time. He says, I am ready and willing. Glory is about to burst forth with signs and wonders and miracles. My en entr um, entrance will be amazing and evident for all to see. Look up and open your hearts because I do a, a new thing an unusual thing. Do not be dismayed, for I'm coming 
with provision and breakthrough. Do not settle back, um, but move forward in the things that I've told you. Uh, push through the weariness and the oppression and reach for the prize. The answers will soon be clear. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, um, for inviting us and encouraging us and that excitement is building to receive more of you, to, to be able to give it away. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this upcoming time on Saturday. We thank you again for Rose's, you know, heart to to hear you and and be obedient to what you are asking of her. We thank you for all of those that have joined, um, joined in with her to to help make this happen and and bring this about. Lord, we just pray blessing over all involved. Lord God, and, and protection for them and their families, Lord, from the enemy who wants to try to, to mess this up. But Lord, we thank you that, that this was your idea and that you are on the move because you said in your word that you would, that not one would perish. You go after each and every one you've ever created because you know them. You know the inner workings of their lives and their hearts. And you would that each one of us would experience you and the fullness of who you are, the beauty of who you are, and be encountered by your love. And we know, Father, that that is what Saturday will be about, your love encounter for each and every yes. one that yes. will be there, Lord God. So we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would compel many to come and participate and be a part of what God is doing. And, and we thank you that the atmosphere of heaven is, is in this region. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are moving about this region, bringing forth the destiny that this region was created for, the Twin Ports yes. region. Mm -hmm. And we, we thank you, Lord God, for, mm -hmm. for all those, Lord God, that, that are hearing your voice and willing to step into those, even those hard things, Lord, that you ask. But God, we know it is for your glory that you desire to be seen and known and heard. Yes. And so we welcome yes. you to come, Holy Spirit, on Saturday. We welcome yes. you to come and move in power and yes. glory and love and, and in all that you want to do. Open hearts, open ears, open blind yes. eyes. Have your way, Holy Spirit, yes. in, in, on Saturday in all that you are doing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I just I pray for the body of Christ in the Twin Ports in Duluth and Superior, across yes. denominational lines. Yes. It doesn't matter what church building you are in or how you identify yourself. Yes. But Lord, I lift all of us up to you. And I ask you to come and meet each one of us with great grace, great yes. hope, great anointing, great unity, yes. and great power, Father. Let your fire fall upon our hearts in such a way that we lay down on that fire and we become the sacrifice that you need, Amen. that we burn yes. bright and hard because yes. it's not about ourselves, it's right. about you. Yes. In yes. Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Amen. Yes. Father, we just pray for all of the logistics on Saturday, Father. We just pray for good weather. We pray for safety for everyone traveling there, Father. And we just pray that um, you go before us and you know yes. us. Yes. You'll be waiting yes. and that... Um, you come expectantly, Father, in Jesus' yes. name. Lord, I just pray for those that um, that are hungry and eagerly awaiting to see the book of Acts demonstrated yes. in their lifetime. Yes. That, Father, that we will be the hands and feet of Jesus. That we will have the eyes and ears to see what Holy Spirit is speaking and saying to us. Yes. And Father, we cannot wait and anticipate your glory and your manifested power demonstrated, not only in our lives, but in the lives of every single person that comes. So Father, we thank you. We thank mm -hmm. you for the revival yes. that's going to happen. And we thank you for the awakening, for the ears that are going to happen. And yes. we give you the praise and we give you the honor and we give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you on Saturday, and we will see you again next week. <laughs>